All right, so this screencast is going to go over MATLAB. So I'm going to open up MATLAB, and on your machine, you're going to open up MATLAB completely different. You're going to click File, Start, MATLAB, whatever. But you're going to get something that has a bunch of different windows here. Um, you're going to have your toolbar here at the top, you're going to File, Edit, Debug, Parallel, you know, all the normal stuff. You're going to have a bunch of buttons. If you're running, I'm running version. 2009 if you're running a different version say 2014 these buttons might look different but you'll have a bunch of buttons up here with a toolbar and you will have your window might look a lot different let me get my window into a scenario where uh, it might look somewhat more like yours um, this down here I'm pretty sure this is sort of the standard um, in here so what you have is you have in this window with these uh, little greater than signs this is called your command window now what happens with these windows here if you look up here there's this little arrow you can actually pop this out and it'll turn into its own little window here um, and then you can pop back in and now it's back in here um, and what that allows you to do is just you know you, you have better more control over what the uh, window does um, so your command window is where you type things in, you know, x equals 1, y equals 2, z equals x times y, um, z equals, say, you know, square root of 2, cosine of pi, you know, that's where you type in all of your, all of your code in here. Um, now when I set those, notice that over here you have something called the workspace, and the workspace shows you all of the variables that are currently active in your window, and we'll talk more about that later, but essentially, if I type in x it tells me that x is 1 and if I look up here x is 1 if you look in the workspace with the value now if I type in y or z everything's fine now if I type in say a it says undefined function or variable and it's in red text which means that it's an error and it's because it that variable is not currently in my workspace um, over here is my command history so if you look here this is October 23rd, 2014, 2.23 p.m., and it tells me every single command that I've done uh, since I started this tutorial. So I can actually double click um, these command things, or I can drag it over, and I can actually drag over my command. So say I do a really complicated command, like 34 um, squared parentheses times 78 divided by the square root of two, and then, uh, so again, it says undefined function method square because that method doesn't exist. So um, I, uh, if you um, hit the up arrow, you can actually recopy um, the previous function. So I'm gonna just hit enter now that works. So there's my answer. Now say I type in CLC or clear, which clear removes everything in my um, command window here. And I'm like, oh great, what was the answer? Well, answer is not defined anymore. So it doesn't say anything, but I can actually go over here to my command history and I can drag it in and hit enter and suddenly I have that command again. And then I can say A equals answer and now A is saved. So there's a variable A there. If I hit CLC, all that does is clears my command window so that nothing's there. Um, the last thing is your current directory. So if I go up to here right now my directory is slash home slash carlos so on a linux machine that's kind of like your c folder now if i go in here to say um, documents homeworks now notice that my path is homeworks and notice over here that my current directory has changed so if i go into say homework 4 i can double click here are all the files that are, and, and again, notice that the current directory changed to homework four. Here are all the files that are currently in um, homework four. So I can type in C Montalvo. Let's see if this file exists. Yeah, C Montalvo problem one. And I run that. Oh, okay, and it says it's, it's undefined. There we go. Um, that created this plot here. So if, if I hit control C, you know, it makes this, it runs this code and generates this plot. So that's because I'm in this current directory. Now let's say that I go back and I go into my current directory and I go to homeworks. Now look at what's in my directory. This full, this f function, problem two, 
it doesn't exist anymore. And the reason why it doesn't exist is because I am not in my current directory. So when you download a file from your computer, from the internet, and put it onto your machine, you need to make sure that you're running the code from the folder. It's called the current directory. If you type in PWD, that stands for present working directory. PWD. So PWD tells you the folder that you're in. If you hit LS, it lists all of the functions that are in in there. Now these are folders, so if I CD into homework 8, so that means I change directory into homework 8, now look up here at the current directory, the current directory has changed. If you look over here at the current directory, this is also changed. And then if you hit LS, these are all the files that are in there. Now .m files, these are MATLAB files. So problem one dot m will run, and sorry, I need to do just problem one. This will run this code. So it generates this plot. Let me bring this down, and it outputs some numbers. And the numbers are relevant, but the point is, is that if I again go back and go back to homeworks and try to run problem one, it won't work because it doesn't exist. If I CD into homework eight, and I hit LS, problem one, now suddenly the code runs and it generates the plot. Okay, so that was just a basic overview of MATLAB. Uh, hopefully that will shed some light on how everything works. Good luck.